For the Investing News Network, I'm Brian McGovern, here today at the Lyft Expo Show with Jennifer Lee from Deloitte Canada. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time today. No problem. So Jennifer, you just came up from your panel talking about data and analytics in the cannabis space. Can you talk about some of the takeaways that you took from that panel? Well, I think the most important one is that data is an asset. Um, and in a world where there's very little information, organizations that start to build this asset uh, will, in my opinion, win in the marketplace. Um, but that has to be tied together and coupled with brand experience um, and understanding consumer centricity. At the end of the day, this is a retail product. Um, it's a consumer product. And the, the same rules still apply. And I think that any leader um, or executive in the space needs to understand those fundamentals. So Jennifer, Deloitte has sort of made a reputation in terms of market observers. Can you talk a little bit briefly about what you do related to the cannabis industry and sort of the reports that you guys put out? Yeah, so in June of last year, we launched our biggest and most extensive report in the cannabis space, pre-legalization. Um, we, we will definitely continue on with that thought leadership moving forward in 2019. Um, we serve clients all the way from audit and tax when they're starting to set up their companies and the business becomes more complex, right up to IPO, um, mergers and acquisitions, value creation, post-merger integration, right down to analytics. We have one of the most sophisticated analytics practices in the world. Um, up to now you're starting to scale. Do you need ERP systems, setting up organizational design, starting to think through strategy. So we serve our clients end to end. Um, and we believe that to be to help spur an industry like cannabis, they need the professional service support and the trusted advisors. And Deloitte is number one in this space, and we can hope to continue to be number one. Yeah. During your panel, you talked a little bit about some of the trends that are coming up for the cannabis business industry. You mentioned M&A. Obviously, this has been a space that has faced a lot of consolidation and seems to continue to face it now, now into 2019. Specifically on the M&A, what kind of deals are we going to see? You know, there's been some rumors about the U.S. companies coming for Canadian companies. There's been some bids already. Uh, there's been IPO deals between Canadian and U.S. companies. What are some of the things that you will see that, that you think we'll see during the year? Well, I think you'll see Canadian companies want to globalize. I said that on the panel today. Um, scale is the name of the game, and being small and niche is going to be very hard from a unit cost perspective. Um, I think you're going to see global players coming into Canada and using Canada as a jump off point to the U.S., given the farm bill um, and changes in the farm bill. I think you're also going to see U.S. players trying to understand where they can play within the Canadian market. At the end of the day, the Canadian market is seven, we, we sized it at almost $8 billion. With edibles moving in, I think it's going to be four to five times that. Um, and everyone's looking for what are their strategic options in the space. So I don't think there's going to be a one-trend-fits-all um, M&A theme. I think it's going to be all about strategic plays. And for each company, it's going to be different. Now, differentiation is the name of the game in cannabis, too. And so companies differentiating their strategy, just like they have to differentiate their product and experience at the consumer level, it's going to be critical to win. Yeah. If we can steer in on that idea that you mentioned about sort of the being very specific is not going to work. You're going to have to be very global in order to participate in that landscape. You know, there's been some producers in the Canadian space that have said, we are craft or we are very, our products are where our branding is, our marketing is. Uh, and that's what's going to carry us all the way through to the, to the finish line. And then you have other producers that have been massive and setting up scale and setting up production in different countries. You know, what do you think those terms will, will they meet in the middle? Where, will, will those kind of smaller companies be able to participate in the global landscape? Or is it kind of the race is set for the, for the bigger players? No, I don't think there's, I think there's always a place for craft. Uh, if you look at alcohol, you'll see craft uh, is very prominent to the point where they build followings. So I think that there's going to be different types of companies that are going to be in the market. You're going to continue to have your craft with a great story that's very local. And then you're going to have global players that are much, that can get some scale. So it depends where in the value chain you're going to play. But I don't. Th I think there's a place for craft. I think that people love the fact that you know some or some uh, LPs serve the local market. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just all about what's the strategy. 
and you know, if you decide to go global, you need capital, right? So it presents other challenges. If you decide to stay craft, there is challenges with being craft. Your costs are much higher, etc. So there's no wrong way to think about the market. Um, what I said on the panel today is observe other industries and learn from other industries. They've been through this before, and it would be foolish for us to think that those those business rules don't apply. That's that's my main. Yeah, a lot of takeaways between the retail and the CP, the cannabis fancy as itself a CPG industry. Yeah. Um, zeroing in on the U.S.-Canada relationship, there's been a lot of conversation about what the focus is for investors in particular, moving more down south border, those growth opportunities in the U.S. How do you see the relationship between these two markets that are trying to interact with one another and also maybe trying to overtake one another even a little bit? Well, overtake is going to be a challenge because it's still federally illegal down in the U.S., right? So I think that, like any business, um, as the market in the U.S. opens up, the capital, the competitiveness to attract capital is going to be you know, a key theme for 2019, 2020. Um, investors are going to want returns, and therefore, you know, organizations that are receiving investment need to perform. That's one thing. I think that organizations um, that want to invest, they're also looking at the U.S., but we also see a lot of flight of capital coming up to Canada. So I think it's a two-way flow. Um, it's much easier in Canada to, to invest because of the, the regulations. So I don't think there's a, I don't, I think there's a coexistence that's happening now. People are just careful. Where, how do I invest? How do I make sure I can get my capital out? And how do I make sure that my capital is being put, put to good use? Okay. So as a last thing, you have a focus on the retail aspect for the cannabis industry. Can you give us sort of your overview or a review of what the current market looks like in Canada? You know, we just had the, sh the launch from Shepherd's Drug Mart for their online medical store. Ontario is set to announce the, the winners of their lottery. They're going to roll out their, their stores this year. What's sort of the landscape in Canada for retail? What needs to change? What needs to improve? I think the market's settling right now, and we need to give it time to settle. I think that um, in Ontario, once it begins to roll out, you know, the, you'll see a calm. I think there was, a, there was a frenzy before the lottery was announced because everyone thought that they could get access to all the licenses that they wanted. Um, I think that you're going to start to see regulation in edibles come out and more clearly, and that's going to set the stage for what kind of market are we going to have. Now, Canada is still a small market relative to the U.S., but my, my advice to my clients has very much been, get it right here in Canada. And once you get it right, then the question is what's the play, right? And you may decide to stay Canadian, you may not. You may decide to stay local. But what's going to happen in the retail market is we've got to get these stores up and running. We need to get our e-commerce channels continuing to hum. We need to serve Canadians well. And we need to manage public safety and protect public safety. To me, in 2019, if that happens, then Canada will be seen as a credible G7 country that launched cannabis. There's many different factors, and just, of course, making money is important, but at the same time, public safety, and how Canada executes as a G7 country is going to be important. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate yeah, it. Thank you very much. From the show floor at the Lyft Expo in Vancouver, I'm Brian McGovern for the Investing News Network.